Hello and welcome back. A couple episodes back we put up the steel for the radial vaults and soon we'll want to cover these in concrete. But without a bottom form the concrete will just fall through. So we need to build a form to keep the concrete up in the vaults. In anticipation of this I had done some experiments to try to find a good material to use. It needed to be light, flexible, cheap, able to hold up to the weather. Most options were eliminated in the hardware store aisle. But I want to test these three out in the weather. I also thought that maybe adding polyurethane would make a difference, so I half-coated these boards and left them out for the entire time that I was putting up that steel. The hardboard panels on the left were the cheapest and most flexible and seemed to hold up without any issues. The Luon on the right was the prettiest but was not actually very flexible at this level of curvature, so I bought a bunch of hardboard and got started. I wanted a tight fit with butt joints, so the plan was just to put the 4x8 sheets up and screw them to the underside of the steel arches. The next board would butt against this one, and then I would add wood strips to hold them in place against the load. That rain is foreshadowing. In theory, these are radial vaults with simple curvatures, so I should have been able to put these sheets in without a problem. But actually, the outer edge is a bit of a smaller radius, so it didn't quite work out that way, and I needed to notch it a little. I quickly realized this wasn't going to work out. These panels were too big for my crew to manage effectively. The process just wasn't even workable. So I just sat there thinking for a while. I wanted butt joints so I could minimize my seams. But I also needed a workable plan. So I'd have to compromise on those butt joints. Okay, new day, new plan. Let's take down the previous boards. The new plan would have overlap joints and would go on like shingles. These new narrower boards are much more manageable, but we're still a bit too floppy until we put that support stick in place. We then put additional sticks to cover the seams between the panels. That video was lost, but this process happens over and over, so you'll see it again later. Skipping ahead, and since I wasn't worrying about butt joints anymore, I also didn't mind putting the screws in on the outside. This pushed the hardboard securely against the wood battens, and you can see how it really tightened everything up. This footage shows the process of adding the battens to the overlap. It takes one person inside to hold the battens, and then one outside to drive in the screws. Another thing to notice here is that I started bringing up the hardboard panels with that middle batten already attached. The panels were all the same across most of the vault, except for the edge that was touching down against the concrete arch. Those needed to be custom trimmed to fit, and always took much longer. Now we're inside the second vault and inserting the middle set of hardboards. These were cut at the same angle but shorter because the spacing of the steel arches was less. They tucked in with the hardboard going above the previous hardboard but the wood batten going under the previous. Again, the final boards up against the concrete arches required a custom trim. The smallest section closest to the tower was actually the hardest to get in because the curvature was the tightest. But at least it only required five panels. We add the support battens on the inside and then go and add screws from the outside. Here Sherry's telling me if my screw missed a batten and which direction to try again. All the gaps tighten up when you add the screws. You may recall from the earlier videos that we had two smaller vaults. The hardboard just wasn't flexible enough for these radii, so we would fall back to our earlier experience with lath and screen. If you want to see how we did the whole bedroom wing with this method, you can click up here. Again, it's a two-person job with Sherry pushing up the wires and Michael twisting them on. Adding the lath is a separate step not shown here. Meanwhile, I was working on the third standard vault. This hardboard method was certainly faster than the lath method. Now I'm adding the temporary blocks on the tower that help form that inner arch shape. Those gaps will be closed and the panels will be rounded when we add the screws on the outside. My friends Aaron and Ryan came over to help with some vaults, but first we needed to sort out the ends of these ones. Here you can see the assembly of the batten boards on the ground. 
I could make two per 4x8 sheet. Oops, bumped the camera sideways. The battens themselves are just 2x4s ripped into three strips. It's the cheapest way. I started adding these 1x3s to help stiffen the assembly. It looks like David is just sitting there, but if I miss a batten with a screw, it really helps to have someone on the other side to tell you where to try again. This is a zoom in on the process of putting up those blocks for the innermost arch form. I marked the wall with a template and then used Tapcon screws to attach blocks to the wall. The blocks are scrap lumber, mostly 2x4s, cut at an appropriate angle and length. To form the arch. The blue smurf tubes are conduit for getting lighting up into the vaults, but they didn't always stay where they were supposed to be during that gunite process for the tower, so now I needed to make some adjustments. This formwork required a lot of hardboard panels to be made. We could cut two from each 4x8 sheet. You can see we got a little waste for each sheet. And then we're ripping some more battens, three per two by four. And here they're assembling them in the shade of the mudroom. Back to one of the small vaults, you can see the lath is already in and I added some hardboard to the sides where the curvature wasn't a problem. By now we've worked out the process and it's just a matter of cranking through to get all the vaults done, although I never did figure out a better way to handle those custom trim pieces that go against the concrete arches. More wood blocks for the 6th standard vault. And I had to extend this tube that had snapped off. A dove had moved into this vault. They make really crappy nests, so I put in that Tyvek tape to keep the eggs from rolling out. From time to time you'll see this dove flooding around in the time lapse, making sure I don't mess with the nest. I tried to give the dove as much space as I could, but I had to continue with the work. Finishing up and adding the screws to the 5th vault, and then the panels to the 6th. Getting the screws into this tight space was tricky. This clip is just to show the dove is still there even after I completed the forms above her head. Here again, we're adding those stiffening 1x3s. And now we moved over to the larger vaults by the kitchen and dining room. We started by insulating the vault end walls with 4 inches of XPS and layers of billboard vinyl. Very similar to the process we've used in earlier videos. So skipping to the end of that, and we can start putting in boards and battens.
I kept this bit in because it made me laugh. Uh, this billboard vinyl was for a casino. Sad to cover it up. We've covered this process in other videos, but quick summary, we attach wood furring strips to the wall, we put insulation over that, we put screws through the lath into the furring strips, and that holds the insulation in place, and then the shot creek comes and gets put on the outside of the lath and holds everything in place. Again, running the smurf tube conduit that will be set within the radial vault concrete. These are to put lighting along the top edges of each arch, and they're all connected, so they're all daisy-chained together. This one here is for the ceiling light. Each smurf tube runs down to a three-way switch on either side of the kitchen. Here you can see a box from before we added the hardboard vaults. The hardboard will be added to this side of it, and then concrete will be poured so that will be completely covered in concrete. I'll still be able to run wiring through them, and then I can add nice lights along the top edges of each rib. I set up the boxes so they open in one side, and then after the concrete sets, I'll just drill a hole through to allow electrical access to the other side. Most of the vaults will have a ceiling fan, and they're connected to two-way switches on either side of the room. Some of you may have noticed some problems happening with the hardboard in this pick. First, see how wobbly the shadow is. The shadow is because the board is warping like crazy. And then see here, it has actually ripped away from the steel arch. It was doing this in many places. The hardboard would expand when it got wet, and since it was confined, stresses would build up. I didn't see this in my experiment at the beginning because my experiment panels were not constrained, so they could expand and contract again. But when they're constrained, the forces are considerable. You can see it snapped this number 14 screw. So we were pretty much done setting up the forms, but now the weather was undoing all our work, and the Gunite crew still hadn't even agreed on a date to come out. We need to cover things up. So here I'm using a 6mm plastic sheet. We attached it at the edges and then dropped weights between the vaults to keep it from blowing up. We decided to double up on the number of our screws to try to push down those bumps. So we pulled the plastic back and added thousands more. We also decided to add 1x3s to stiffen up the battens. Here we're adding a few more pieces and a lot more screws to stiffen up that outer edge. One other thing to take care of was the return duct from the bedrooms. This pulls the warm air from the tops of the skylights and the bedrooms and sucks it up and around the tower toward the solar chimney, where in summer it can get vented, free air conditioning, and in winter it can get sucked down and reused. You can really see the rippling because of the way the light is falling in this shot. I could have had the gunite crew out at this point, but I still hadn't even got them to agree on a date to come out, so I figured I would use the extra time to stiffen these vaults some more. In this scene, it looks like the boys are working on their own, but actually they're twisting wires that Sherry and I are pushing up from below, or each in one vault. By this point, a couple dozen of those number 14 screws had snapped, and this was before applying any gunite load, so I was concerned that the whole thing was going to fall down under load, and I figured the wires could help hold even if some of the screws failed. And then we got a crazy rainstorm. Normally I don't mind getting a little wet, but I decided to wrap up to protect the boards. I carried the camera downstairs without remembering to turn it off, so you get this still life shot. You can see I played around on my phone for a while. And then I prepped some more wire ties. I figured I'd, the rain would stop eventually. And then I took the camera out for a rainy walkthrough. Let's take a look. Sorry, I guess I had the sound turned off, which is too bad because it was really impressive. The rain doesn't cause any problems for the last sections. plastic above the vaults is carrying most of the rain off onto the lower end of the vaults, but when there are holes in the plastic it does come through.
I'm glad I used all treated plywood and lumber for that stuff. I'm also glad we're on a sandy site that drains very well, or this area would be totally flooded. Well, I think we'll end the video here. At this point, we still had no idea when the Gunite crew was coming, and the season was running out of time. If you made it this far into this long video, please like, subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment, whatever. Let's feed that YouTube algorithm. Hopefully I'll get the next video out in about a week.